I'm your host, Rocio Libertad Mendoza, and tonight we are at the M Bar in Boyle Heights, Los Angeles, California, where we are about to enjoy an amazing and high energy group based out of Oakland, California. They are an eight piece band, and they are an Afro Colombian cumbia band, and we have some of the members joining us this evening to discuss a little bit more about their musical journey. I'm very excited to present to you La Misa Negra. Bienvenidos a Los Angeles. Hi, Muchas gracias. gracias. And welcome to Musica LA. Yes. So please introduce yourselves and let us know what role you play in the band. Bueno, yo soy Diana Trujillo y soy la cantante de La Misa Negra. And I'm Marco Polo Santiago. I'm the player accordion and guitar and I'm also the band leader and the founder of La Misa Negra. Perfecto. So can you please describe to our viewers what style of music do you play? We play 1950s style uh, Colombian cumbia and Afro-Colombian, other Afro-Colombian rhythms like gaita, porro, puya. What makes that style of music so unique? Um, well, we really focused on the 1950s and 60s uh, era of that, of that style of music, that sound. And um, 
right around that time is when big bands like Pacho Galan, Pedro Laza, Lucho Bermudez, uh, they started incorporating the big band sound that was being used in like some of the Cuban bands, like mambo bands and stuff, into the Colombian kind of thing that they were doing, which was cumbia. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a very kind of old style of music. Mm -hmm. Bands don't really play that style of cumbia or, or those related genres, subgenres. And so we really wanted to um, to kind of bring in those styles of music back because they're pretty much obsolete. A lot of those styles that we play, and um, and and bring it for like you know people out here in California and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, this, there's not really this kind of band, and even in Colombia, you know what I mean. This oh, is more wow. like the stuff that she's from Colombia, and this is more like the kind of stuff her grandparents would listen uh -huh. to. Not even like her parents really. Sí. You know what I mean? Bueno, pues bueno, la idea es que es que no se pierda esta, esta cultura tan rica que tenemos en Colombia y que pase siempre, pues ahorita lo que queremos es que pase a una generación nueva a los jóvenes claro. y que siempre mantengamos toda esa cultura, que no olvidemos pues nuestros ritmos y bueno eso es lo que nos hace a nosotros un poquito más únicos. Sí, claro. So, you're the founder of the group. Was that your inspiration um, for the band? Was that what inspired you? Yeah, yeah. Just to bring that music to the forefront? Yeah, um, I've always loved cumbia, like being Mexican, you know, growing up in LA, like it was like mandatory for us, like the, <laughs> the weekly family parties. Everyone, there was always someone getting married or baptized or something, right? Sounds and, like so much fun. Right, and so um, cumbia was a soundtrack for those parties and stuff. So uh, I, I, I just grew up listening to it. And uh, when I got older, I started on my own, kind of pursuing, dig, digging deeper into that style of music and where it came from. And, discovering bands like Andres Landero, Coreleros de Mahawal, stuff like that. And so, um, while I was on a trip to Oaxaca, which is where my parents were from, I was exposed to all like all kinds of different types of music from there and from other parts of Latin America. And it just kind of like made me go back to my iPod and rediscover a lot of the Colombian music that I had on my iPod. And, um, and when I got back to Oakland, I was like, I want to start this kind of band. There's not another band doing this. And I wanted to be the I wanted to be the first one to Pioneer. like yeah yeah. So where are you originating from? I'm from Los Angeles. Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're home now. Yeah yeah, it's great. That's why we had to do an album release party in LA. We just did one in San Francisco two weeks ago, but um, we this uh, we've been together less than two years, and um, or about two years this week actually, and um, but we've played in the in LA like 15 times. This is our 15th show in LA. For being a small band, that's like kind of and a I'm lot sure of gigs. And I'm sure they love you here. Yeah, and so we had we have a lot of fans here, so we had to do an album release party and that my parents can come to and everything. Oh, uh, they must be so proud. Yeah, yeah. Totally. ¿Y usted dónde es? Yo soy de Medellín, Colombia, y bueno, para mí siempre siempre fue lo máximo poder tener la oportunidad de continuar mis mis raíces y pues sobre todo aquí en Estados Unidos y en California en especial seguir como con, con lo que es mi pasión que es Qué la bonito. música la cumbia el, la parranda y bueno poder hacer eso aquí es es un honor sí es it's muy crazy bonito. for her because she left Colombia eight years ago to come here or nine years at this point uh, eight, eight years to come here and then to end up in the Colombian in like the one Colombian cumbia band. Sí, 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 nunca, nunca, creo que nunca pensé right, like que really fuera a, a, a tener una banda donde, donde se toque cumbia colombiana. Wow, wow. It's, it was meant to be. Sí. Yeah. And it's a blessing for us too because I'm Mexican and we have Asian Americans in the band, we have, you know, people from Milwaukee and Ohio in the band and stuff. Um, and to have a Colombian, like a native Colombian, you know, singing. We have another singer who's not here today. It gives it who's the also from Colombia. Yeah, they have yeah. the right like vibe and the, the right sabor for el, like the la, phrasing. El sabor, sí, como yeah. como la forma de cantar también. No cualquiera canta cumbia, no con con la misma pasión con la que nosotros lo hacemos. Porque... ¿Qué es la diferencia? Uh, creo que nosotros siempre es una, hemos sido una cultura muy rumbera, una cultura muy algo eh, feliz. La gente en Colombia se divierte mucho y disfruta mucho este tipo, la cumbia. La cumbia significa como carnaval y se ve en todos los carnavales de Colombia. Eh, lo que nos identifica es eh, la variedad de cumbias que hay. Entonces, pues imagínate, para nosotros eso es lo máximo. Escuchar cumbia es como si sentimos, yo digo que la cumbia en la sangre porque sentimos, nosotros escuchamos cumbia inmediatamente en nuestro cuerpo 
se empieza a mover sin sin it's like even if you're not Latin American even or if you've never heard cumbia like people come to our shows it's the first cumbia band they've ever seen with that ch -ch 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 like you just can't escape yeah, it there's just not like, a lot of that kind of music coming out of Oakland right now I mean Los Angeles is saturated with that sound and we love it but um, it's different because you're coming out of Oakland now what brought you to Oakland bueno yo desde que vine a Estados Unidos he vivido yo vivo en en Concord pero cerquita pues a Oakland y qué le trajo a Concord Okay, eh, Concord, de so, Colombia. <laughs> un hombre. Bueno, un hombre. Oh, el amor, el amor. El amor. <laughs> sí, así que bueno, aquí, aquí mm -hmm. llegué. <laughs> and then for me, my wife's uh, family lives in Oakland, and no, so. Uh, el amor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So, what is the inspiration behind the name La Misa Negra? Uh, Black Sabbath. Like I'm a total like metalhead. Okay. Uh, and hip hop too, as you can tell from the T-shirt, but um. And I just wanted like a killer name for the band and it just like, you know, when I was in Mexico when it occurred to me, okay, I want to start a band and about five seconds later, it was like, and I'll call it La Misa Negra, you know what I mean? Like it was pretty instant, um, but it just worked out because one of the things we're trying to do with the band is really embrace the West African roots of mm. Colombian music. And so I wanted a name that had something about black in the, in the name, something with negro, negra. So La Misa Negra was perfect. You know, in Santeria, which is practiced all over the Caribbean, mm -hmm. a Misa for them is different from what a Misa is for Catholics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for them, it's uh, through music, connecting with their ancestors and the spirits and everything. And so, um, you know, for us, a Misa is like people that are going to come tonight, you know, they're going to take part in this Misa, you know, just you know, letting go. Religious ha experience. Yeah, letting go, having fun. and. And it's all about, we, you know, we try to blur the kind of like that invisible line between the, the audience and us. And it's really just a party, you know. We're not really trying, we're musicians and whatever, but like our main thing is we just want people to have fun. You know, that's, it's really simple, you know. We're not trying to like make a musical statement, really, you know what I'm saying? It's just about, the reason I started is because it's fun. It's fun to listen to, it's fun to dance to, and it's fun to play. A place for people to congregate, enjoy themselves, and take something with them. Right, right. Sí. I love the name. Inclusive a nosotros nos gusta más cuando tenemos un contacto más con la gente. Creo que eso hace que nuestro show sea mucho mejor. Cuando, cuando estamos en un escenario donde el público está muy alejado, no se siente la misma energía sí. que, que si estamos todos juntos y bueno. Sí, se siente, se siente claro, la energía sí. de la gente. So, um, I know that you put out an album this summer and it's called La Misa de Medianoche. It just came out this week, actually. Oh, it came out yeah, this, this week. week yes, okay. Yeah. So, and I know you've gained a lot of popularity as a live performance group. How is that success for you? How are you, um, how do you respond to that? Well, it's amazing because it kind of started off as an experiment. Um, in the past, uh, I think, that applies to most musicians, you know, you spend a long time like putting a band together, writing your own material, and it could, it could be a very long time before you start gigging, you know, and then right. when you start gigging, then you, really, you figure out whether people are, are, you know, connecting with what you're doing, right? And um, right here, part of the thing that we're doing with this band is kind of selecting uh, those gems, those like lost songs that people don't really know, you know? and and playing them live, you know, usually like you gotta go find a record to, to hear that song or if, if it's a really good DJ in LA or in the Bay, like mm -hmm. they might spin that one song and stuff, but no band is gonna play it, you know, people don't really know, you know, you know, a lot of that lost like music from the 50s and the 60s, right? So, so what we're trying to do is blend like our original material with some of these covers that we're doing. And so um, when we started playing, like immediately people were just connecting what, what we were doing, you know? And, um, and it's been amazing because it's been like the complete opposite of what a lot of us have experienced with our other projects where uh, people don't get the music weird or crazy <laughs> or whatever. But here there's like a universal appeal to some extent, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, it's been fairly easy to like be able to play in a lot of places and open up for Celso Pena, Norte, Chico Trujillo, Sergeant Garcia, very be careful, like a ton of bands. Mm -hmm. The very first uh, gig I booked was opening for La Sonora Dinamita. That was the first gig we booked when the band was just starting out, you know what I mean? And that was just, that's how, like, you know, 
good it's been for us, the, yeah. the reception of, of us trying to get out and play and stuff. And I guess that's when you know that you're doing the right thing when it feels that right. Way. Right. It I feels mean, feels easy. Yeah, that's the thing. Like that's the thing for me personally. I felt like it was always an uphill battle of doing whatever music I was doing. Like, like no one getting it. My parents <laughs> not liking it. No one listens to it. Right. And now it's the complete opposite. You know what I'm saying? My parents can actually get what we're doing, and and just people just show up to our shows that's and stuff. Amazing. We have people that don't go to our just come to a show in LA, they'll come to a show in the Bay, I don't know where they live, but we'll see them like all over the place, and they're like, you know, like, we're a fairly new band, but we're starting to get like those loyal, like, you know, What are you followers. calling your fans? We don't have a name yet. They need a name. Diablitos. Los Diablitos de la Mesa Negra. That sounds good. We're joined by a couple of band members from La Misa Negra. Please introduce yourselves and let us know what your role is in the band. I, I'm Charles Greenwich, and I play the clarinet in the band. I play, uh, my name is Justin Chin, and I play the tenor saxophone. So, how did you both um, come to join La Misa Negra? Um, I met Marco while I was practicing under a bridge in Oakland. Um, true like, story. True story, yeah. <laughs> I like to practice by the freeway because uh, you, know, you practice in your apartment, it's kind of noisy, and you're kind of always wondering, well, do the neighbors hate this? <laughs> you know, so uh, I like to practice under a freeway, and uh, he was walking by, and he said, oh, that sounds pretty good. Uh, here, let me give you your card. You know, so he gave me a card, and then later I went to uh, a few rehearsals, and he had a gig. So I just played. I kind of faked my way from the first gig. Yeah. That's a great story. What's your musical background? Um, I'm not faking it, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I learned how to read at some point, but never really liked it. Didn't seem very authentic, so uh, um, I did a lot of playing by ear, and not the you know, definitely not the, the route of um, scholarly route. Mm -hmm. So I'm still catching up. What are your influences? Um. Well, right now, cumbia, it's like a uh, list of a lot of stuff. Um, I've always liked klezmer, and, and a lot of times when I'm practicing, um, I'll say, oh, we like that klezmer you're playing. So, no, it's not klezmer, it's cumbia. But it's got the same scale, so... For those of us feeling. who aren't familiar with klezmer, can you please describe what that is? Um, klezmer is uh, Jewish music, and it's... Um, it's got a beat, a lot of it's dance music, and it's in the harmonic minor mode, so it has that kind of dark sound. And that's uh, one thing Marco didn't describe about this band is almost everything we play is in the minor key. So even if it's happy, it's kind of dark, right? And, and Klezmer is the same deal. Is it's got this sad feeling, but also happy. It's, you know, fast. And, yeah. That's great. I love minor keys and I love that sound. Yeah. That's so interesting. Thank you for showing that. So you play the clarinet. Tenor, uh, sex. The tenor. tenor sex. He's a clarinet guy. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Yeah, I look like a clarinet guy. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Yeah. I see clarinet on you. Um, so you play the tenor sax. Yeah, tenor sax. How did yeah. you come to join them? I, that's actually a funny story because I, I'm originally from San Francisco and I lived in Seattle for 12 years. And uh, I had just moved back a couple years ago and I was looking for a band. My experience, uh, my experience comes mostly with soul, funk, uh, a little bit of jazz too, a little Latin. Um, so I came back looking for a band and I couldn't find a band. I, I was on Craigslist. And I saw Marco was looking for a sax player. Uh, and then I came out for rehearsal, uh, mixed well with the, you know everyone in the group. And yeah, that was about two years ago, and it's been it's been great ever since. And um, you nice. know, so glad you to be part of this trip. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I was in Seattle for 12 years and uh, playing some music there and kind of doing my thing. But uh, you know, it's the Bay Area. You know, it's a great. I mean, it's a great part of California, and I just wanted to come back home and be a closer to my family. Check out the music scene here, of and course. the weather is a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a hot guy, you know. That's why I had a great time in Seattle. You know, the yeah. rain, the cool is fabulous. So being in San Francisco is great, um, and I'm just happy to be back home. And playing great music and, and being in a group of great people, you know. And so did you study the saxophone in school? Um, a little bit. I did. Um, I mean, I took lessons, of course, and I took a lot of classes. Um, but I wasn't uh, uh, classically trained, or I didn't go to a uh, music school. A lot of it, you know, like Charles says, is faking it. But uh, 
you know, there's some like, scholarly aspect to um, playing the saxophone. So yeah, so, you know, a little bit of both, you know, but you learn on the fly. Cumbia, you know, something you kind of, you know, you listen and, and you get a feel for it. And, and once, you, once you feel the rhythm and, and the beat and the singing, and then it's, you know, it just comes to you. It's, it's, a, it's a great, it's a great music. Yeah, it's, it's so much fun. I'm so excited to see you guys oh, play tonight. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. For having us. Yeah. So Diana, you're the cantante principal. ¿Cuándo empezaste a cantar y, y qué fue tu inspiración? Bueno, yo comencé a cantar desde que tengo 12 años, canto y, y estudié educación musical en Medellín. Okay. Y bueno, después cuando vine acá, eh, estuve para la música por un tiempo. Eh, eh, porque pues me dediqué a, a mi vida personal pero luego otra vez comencé y me encuentro con, con la mesa negra mm. con la mesa negra fue muy chistoso porque eh, pues nos comunicamos vía facebook <ríe> el famoso facebook Ajá. y bueno hice mi audición y lo más chistoso fue que yo audicioné como un martes o un miércoles no recuerdo bien un martes y, audicionó sí yo audicioné Está para, para participar sí Sí, 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 o sea, yo decía, bueno, vamos a ver qué pasa. Cuando me encantó la música, me encantó el ritmo, me encantó como todos los integrantes eh, es, eran already como una familia. Entonces, uh -huh. eso me gustó, la, el compromiso que tenían todos eh, cuando yo entré. Y bueno, cuando audicioné, ya Marco me dijo, oye, pero tenemos un concierto en Los Ángeles el sábado. El viernes, era el viernes. El viernes, el viernes, el viernes y el sábado. El viernes y el sábado. It was a year ago, right around Muertos. We had, sí, we're para playing the that self-help graphics for the oh, Dia de los Muertos thing. Okay. And then after that, there was a thing called El Velorio. We're very be careful. The Get Down Collective put it on. So it was two gigs that night. Then the next day, we're playing uh, in Santa Ana for their Dia de los Muertos Two thing. gigs, two. And then we had another gig in downtown. <laughs> and we didn't so have a singer. Our singer had just 20 played. songs in three days. <laughs> yeah. eh, más o menos. Yeah. Sí, bueno, lo más chistoso fue que eh, fue para mí todo, como era un caos al comienzo, y, pero ya me aventé como dicen y, y ahí estamos y pues ha funcionado bien. Y aquí sí, seguimos con la comida. Felicidades con todo eso. So, um, what are your goals and your aspirations um, for the future as a band? Well, I'm just focusing on this next year that's coming, 2014, mm -hmm. and we just want to hit the road and play outside of California. We haven't gone outside of the state, and so we want to go on tour, hopefully do like a couple and just, you know, bring the music to new places and pump our album out, try to get it to as many places as possible. And that's it, and just go for that, from there, you know. So you play the guitar, the harana, and the accordion, which is my favorite instrument. Which one, the accordion? the accordion? I love the accordion. Yes, what is your musical background? Um, I used to rap, I used to produce, and I used to play heavy metal guitar for years, and um, I never played Latin music before, uh, or even tried. Like I never, or even cared. You know, and I always thought the I thought the accordion was a nerdy instrument. I never cared. Pero eso se va a notar. No se preocupe. Eso se va a notar ahorita, porque él está tocando cumbia, pero está está bailando como rock, como heavy metal. And um, I started the band first, and I kept looking for an accordion player. I couldn't find an accordion player, so I'm like, well, let me buy one and see if it works out. And I'm not. I'm still learning, you know, but I'm, I'm trying. It sounds yeah. great. You're definitely rocking out. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Un placer. Gracias. Mucha suerte con todo. You're watching Musica LA. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to thank La Misa Negra for taking the time to talk with us. I'd like to thank the M Bar. And also to all of our viewers, we hope you join us again on Musica LA.